All right, we're going to start with the recovery cylinder. So I've already pre-opened this just to make sure it was what I ordered, but I haven't done anything else until we get ready to do the video. So it'll arrive boxed like this with some packing, at least this master cool version. I'm going to take this out and I'm just going to sit it over here on this piece of cardboard here. And there's just a piece of plastic in there to help protect the unit. There's nothing else in the box. Let's put this box out of the way. So this is a recovery cylinder is different than uh, a charge cylinder or one that you would get that's got virgin refrigerant in it. You'll notice it's got a Y valve in it, whereas a, a regular uh, refrigerant charge disposable type cylinder will have just a single valve. And I'll show you a picture of an AC Delco one over here on the right for comparison. So these guys, um, this is an empty cylinder, you know, empty of refrigerant anyway, but it's actually charged with nitrogen. So we're going to have to, as part of a commissioning process, evacuate that nitrogen and pull a vacuum on it. Uh, a couple other things about this particular model. Um, this is a 64010 model master cool cylinder. You notice it's painted like a baby blue color because it's meant for R134A refrigerant. It's got a couple of bosses on here that are capped off. Uh, there's another model of this where you could get uh, attachments uh, pre-installed in here for a float valve switch that go on a different model of the recovery machine than the one I got. I got the very basic one so it doesn't have the uh, hookups for that. So this is the correct cylinder to use when you have that setup. So what we're going to have to do is pull all of this nitrogen out, but it's too heavily charged to begin with. So we're going to have to bleed that off until we get to the point where the vacuum pump can handle it. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use just a regular gauge set. So there's nothing special about this. This is my existing Harbor Freight, you know, Pittsburgh R134 gauge set. There's nothing special. You just need a gauge set. And what we're interested in doing is pulling um, the hooking this up to a vacuum pump so we can pull that nitrogen out. So the only thing different about my gauge set is I do have one of these kind of valves attached to it, which is going to come in handy with the vacuum pump so that we can let all this dry air out, cap it off when it's at a very low PSI, and then switch it, from, uh, switch it over to the vacuum pump so that we can then begin to vacuum out the rest of what's in here. So nothing uh, rocket science about this setup. Just going to get this guy going here, and then we'll go ahead and commission the cylinder so that we can move on to the next step. We're going to end up connecting uh, blue to the blue valve over here and red to the red valve for this particular master cool product. Uh, the only difference on those is kind of intuitive, right? The red is going to go deeper into the cylinder and pull the liquid version of the R134A and the blue is going to pull up near the top and get the gaseous version of the refrigerant instead. So you don't need to go crazy on these gauge sets, just hand tighten. That's why they're knurled brass knobs on these. I'm not going to do anything with the dust cap, so we'll leave that on there. Now the first other piece we're going to need is, at least in my gauge set, this guy is going to be uh, tapped for half inch Acme. And we can see here these, these fittings aren't going to fit right because they're one quarter. So what we're going to do is we've got a couple of these adapters for the tank from Master Cool that go from half inch Acme female to quarter inch uh, FM, FFL on the other side, or excuse me, MFL. And now we'll be able to attach everything. Now you, you, your gauge set might not need adapters like this. It might natively have half inch Acme on the end. This one I have does not. And so you need these. And just in case you need the number, that's 82635 for Master Cool, half inch Acme female, one quarter inch MFL, male flared line. Then I just want to grab crescent wrench here. Again, you know, this is not anything that needs to be crazy tight, but we do want to snug it up so we don't have any leaks. And then we'll be able to attach our lines. And I'm going to need to leave these on here anyway. They're not just for this commissioning process, but the recovery tank, or excuse me, the recovery machines lines are also one quarter FML. So we would have needed this anyway. 
All right, so we got this guy on, got him nice and tight. Got this guy on, got him nice and tight. And again, we got these closed. We haven't done anything with these. These are both still in the closed position from the factory. All right, we're gonna keep these closed to start off with. And then we're gonna close the guy on the end of the process hose. Now I'm gonna go get something right over here. Just got a little stool, just a convenient place to hang our gauge set since we're not actually at the vehicle yet. And presuming that we got everything sufficiently tightened down, when we open these lines, or these valves rather, you can see we're pressurized. Got more on the blue side than we do the high side, but it doesn't matter. Now, if you were to open this guy up, actually, what we're going to have to do, forgot to open our top valves here. Now, if we open this guy up, we can feel the nitrogen. Now remember, the Earth's atmosphere is about 80% nitrogen. It's a completely inert gas, doesn't harm anything, so it's perfectly fine to vent the nitrogen out into the atmosphere. And that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to let this stuff out, let this gas out, until this drops down to probably around 5 psi. And while this is dropping down, I'm going to go get a vacuum pump. What I like about having that valve is I can set it in a controlled manner so that I have time to do stuff like this. So I'm just off the camera here getting this vacuum pump ready. And this is again nothing special. This is something I've had before. It's just a Harbor Freight vacuum pump. It does the job. All you want to do on these kind of pumps is make sure that the oil level is sufficient before you start. They've got a quarter inch SAE and another one of these half inch Acme male connectors on the end. And just personal preference, I'm gonna drop another one of these half inch to quarter inch FFL adapters on the end of it. And then we're gonna get to the point where we're down where we wanna be and we'll hook it up there. All right, we're getting kind of close. We're getting to 10. Just tightening up this adapter on the vacuum pump. All right, that's close enough. Now I'm gonna switch it over to here. Well, actually, Ah, guys, 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 guys. I forgot I intended to use this adapter on something else. Don't need it on this particular vacuum pump. This guy's native, native half-inch Acme. All right, now I'm going to go plug this guy in. Zooming, I can get it to reach here. There we go. All right. And now we're just going to draw it down as va and to a vacuum. We're just going to watch our gauge. Open up our valve slowly. Let it pull out all that extra pressure. Now we're down to zero. I've got the valve all the way open down here on the bottom. And now we're just going to let it pull a vacuum on the tank.
Now we should be able to pull between 24 and 27 or so, I think, with this particular pump. We'll see. Looks like we're passing 20 here. Now the pump will sometimes vent out oil. Don't worry about that. Just don't breathe it in. We're getting down to close to 29. We're just going to keep going to see how far we get. It's the maximum of our gauge. So I think at that point we're probably as good as it gets. Okay, we're going to turn our valve, shut off our pump. At that point, very similar to what you do on the vehicle, we're going to let it sit here for a moment, just make sure we don't get any kind of leaks. Now, we shouldn't have because the manufacturer tests the bejesus out of these things, but uh, we'll just go with that just for a few moments, so let it sit for maybe 10 minutes or so, and we'll come back. All right, guys, I will let it go 15 minutes, and you can see we haven't budged a bit, still reading at 30 inches of mercury on this particular gauge set. Now, again, before I move on to the next component setup step, just to tie this off, so the state that we left this in is this manifold's uh, valve here is open. This manifold valve here is open. We still have the two valves on the recovery cylinder open and we have the one on the vacuum pump closed. So at this point we have commissioned this cylinder and we need to now close these valves securely and not open them ever again unless we have a, a line that's been purged of atmospheric moisture and just has refrigerant in it, otherwise we'll contaminate what's in here. So we're gonna go ahead and close this one. We're gonna go ahead and close this one. At this point, we're done with this particular uh, component. It's all set up and ready to go. The last few things that I'll point out about this guy. So these reusable cylinders, they have to be reinspected every five years just to make sure they're safe. Um, here you see stamped right into the metal, retest by December of 2023. And if you go do that, then you get a sticker out here on the back. Then there's some instructions and safety information on the back here. Other than that, this guy is ready to go. All right, guys, All right. I, I forgot to mention a couple of things. So before we wrap up this cylinder video, let me go back to a couple of points, right? So I mentioned earlier that this fitting here is uh, a plug that's on there when you don't have the model that has a float switch already pre-installed. And so when you don't have the float switch, I'm going to show you how you calculate the maximum weight capacity of the refrigerant you can put in the tank safely. A couple other points I want to say before we get to that is you'll, you'll notice how we've got the, the red liquid on the, on the right-hand side and the blue vapor valve on the left-hand side. Just take note of this if you don't have the same brand of tank because some of them have it flipped where there'll be blue on the right and red on the left. And I'll put a picture of an example of one of those you know, right next to this here. Uh, on the video. The other thing I want to point out too is I didn't mention it earlier but besides this plug for the float switch there's also this plug in the back where you can put uh, an air purge valve in if you want. So right you now over, over time of putting the refrigerant in here if you happen to get any 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 actual air in here, non-compressible air, you can go ahead and install something where you can let that out. Um, I'm, I'm fine just using the actual vapor valve to do that, but they have that on there because these tanks can also go on to um, recycling machines, and in which case that would be connected to something that's part of the automated electronics. All right, let's talk about how we calculate what this can hold. So if you turn around the back, you remember we talked about that there's a retest date um, by 12.23 here. And it'll say on the back here, what I said earlier, you know, that you have to get this done every five years for safety reasons. But we didn't talk about all this writing up at the top, and that's important too. Um, there's different units. We're going to talk just about the pounds one. The TW is the tear weight, 17.8 pounds. That's basically the weight of all the metal, right? The, you know, the actual tank, the, the um, construction of it, all of that. That's the tear weight of 17.8 pounds. And I'll see if I can... Um, 
slip in a section of video here with this guy sitting on an electronic scale to show you, you know, how close it is to that actual number. I think it actually is like 17.85 or something like that. Put our cylinder on the scale. We can actually discard this little netting that's part of the shipping material. I should have got that in the video where I commissioned this guy. And so he's telling you that this empty tank weighs 17.85 pounds. And then this WC is the water capacity, 26.2 pounds. So this is the key piece of info. These two uh, numbers are the two key pieces of information that plug into a formula that I'll put down here below on how you calculate the capacity. And basically it works like this. You're going to take the water capacity, in this case of this tank, is 26.2 pounds. Depending on your tank, it could be different. And we're going to divide it by the density of water which is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And that's going to give us uh, a number of 0.42. And we're going to plug that into a formula where we then multiply the 0.42 times the density of R134A at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That gives us plenty of um, safety margin for hot summer day and this tank's baking in the sun. 130 degrees should give plenty of safety margin. That's one of the recommended um, densities to go with. So that happens to be 67.46, and then we multiply that by 0 0.80 for the 80%. We get that number, and we add the tear weight back in of 17.8 pounds, and we end up for this particular tank with a maximum safe weight rating of what we can put into it of 40.47 pounds. And what you can do is you can take a, you know, a, a piece of tape or something and you can stick it up here and you can write that number down and, and use it as a reminder. And so every time you've got this guy and you're doing a recovery operation, you need to, you need to have it on a, a set of electronic scales and you need to be checking against that number. And after so many recoveries and when it gets to that full point, you can't put anything else in there. It's time to uh, take this to a place to get it reclaimed and, and emptied out. So, so that's it. I hope this uh, helps you out. I'm putting this in a playlist with several other components. The next one we'll do in the series will be about the electronic scale, but that's it for the cylinder. If you've got any comments or you've got some complaints too, go ahead and leave those below. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.